Stellar momentum! We're going to solve this pendulum problem with the absolute definition. We're going to solve it with the relative definition that we talked about last video. And that's going to be it. All right, let's go through the setup. So we have our ground, our inertial frame, EX, EY, EZ. EY is pointing straight to the right. EX is pointing straight down. EZ is EX crossed with EY gives us EZ, which is coming out of us, out of the page. We have uh, our, our pendulum here. And uh, it's we're going to call this point mass. This is a point mass, P, of mass M. And we have this green frame fixed to the pendulum. Uh, we've done this quite a few times. ER points from the hinge out to the point. That is ER. EZ is also out of the page in the same direction as our red EZ. And then E theta is EZ crossed with ER. We have gravity pointing down in the EX direction. And uh, angle off of the vertical here, we're going to call theta. And the link is length L. And then finally, this is a little different from the previous pendulum one we did, uh, but the, the hinge point is actually moving. It's moving with some prescribed uh, motion we're going to just call X. You know, it could be anything. It could be a sign something. It could be whatever motion you want. Um, but X, that is pointing from this inertially fixed point O out to the hinge A on our bar here. All right, that's our setup. What we got to do, determine the differential equation of motion using the absolute and relative definition of angular momentum. A lot of this video is going to be me saying, plug in and we're going to go through the algebra because that's all it is. We already went through the pain of kind of deriving the absolute and relative definition in the last video. So now we just get to, you know, reap the benefits of that. All right, absolute definition we're going to start with. Look at that. It's an equation that we solved, <laughs> that we defined last video. Uh, the absolute angular uh, momentum with respect to point A is equal to R crossed with the linear momentum P. And this is also equal to um, R crossed with M R P dot. These, these are the same thing. It's just written a little differently. I took the liberty of copying and pasting this diagram uh, from the last video. And this is um, what all of our vectors mean, all of our position vectors, right? So we have RA, which points from our inertially fixed point O out to uh, the point we want to take the angular momentum with respect to, in this case, A. A is our hinge. Uh, the vector that points... Okay, so RA is this right here. That is RA. Points from O to A, to our hinge. R points from our hinge, our point A, the point we want to take the angular momentum with respect to, points from A to P, our, our point of interest, right? So this is R. That is R. Our P here points from our inertially fixed point O to P. So that is this. And that is equal to RA plus R gives us RP. Okay. This is the process you're going to go through each time. Brian, why did you take the moment about the hinge? Why are you, why are we doing this with respect to point A? Why are we doing it with respect to point A? Why not somewhere else? You could, if you wanted to, it's going to be more work. Um, and we're taking it about A because we're going to eventually need to find the moment with respect to A. And the moment is R crossed F. We know there's going to be an unknown reaction force on the hinge and on the particle, equal and opposite. And if uh, the force is acting through point A, then when we take the moment at A, that unknown reaction force is just gonna get killed. It's, it's just gonna go away and we're gonna see that when we actually compute it. All right, let's, uh, let's keep moving. So we need R. What is R? It's from A to P, we just said that. And that is equal to how do you get from A to P? You travel a distance of L in the ER direction. L, E, R. Let's define uh, RP. So what is RP again? RP points from the inertial, inertially fixed point out to our point of interest. And we just said that it was um, 
RA plus R. So RA is just X in the EY direction plus L in the ER direction. This plus this equals this. And that's what we have written here. X E Y plus L E R equals R P. We have to take the derivative of this because our equation is R P dot. Let's take the derivative of this. Derivative of this here, we're going to do the product rule, and then we're going to do the product rule again. So derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Um, and then we're going to do it for the other one. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. This d dt of ey is equal to zero, right? Because it's not changing. It's part of our inertial frame. d dt of ey is not changing. It's zero. Uh, the length of our pendulum is not changing. So this term is also now zero. So we just have this here and this here. Well, we know what d dt of x is. That's just going to be x dot. That's just x dot. Now we have to find this rate of change of this unit vector er. To do that, and we've done it in quite a few videos already, um, but we take the absolute angular velocity of the green frame and we cross it with the vector itself. What is the absolute angular velocity of this green frame? It's just theta dot. You know, it's, it's changing with respect to our inertial frame by just rotating about the EZ, about the EZ direction by a rate of theta dot. So theta dot EZ crossed with the vector itself, crossed with ER, EZ crossed with ER is E theta. So theta dot E theta is equal to DER DT. And, uh, that's what I have written down here, right? We, we brought down x dot ey, x dot ey, l, theta dot e theta, l theta dot e theta. Let's get this in the same basis. Um, so how do we go from the red basis to the green basis? How do we get from here to here? All we do is rotate this uh, um, uh, about its three direction by an angle of theta. If we rotate the red basis by theta, in the three direction, then we line up with our green basis. So it's just a fundamental three rotation matrix uh, for a DCM, that's it. We can then take the transpose to, to swap these guys right here. So we're taking the, the transpose. And uh, now we have, uh, we can write EY in terms of the green basis, right? So EY is equal to sine theta ER plus cosine theta E theta plus zero EZ, right? So that's all I have here. Sine theta ER plus cosine theta E theta plus the last term here. Now everything's in the same basis. I'm gonna collect the terms. So we have X dot sine theta ER and then uh, X dot cosine theta E theta uh, plus L theta dot E theta. You know, all this is, is E theta. So this is RP dot. Now we're just gonna plug into our equation we had. We're plugging into our equation from up above. R is this times, or crossed with M, RP dot. This is RP dot. Let's, let's do the cross product. ER crossed with ER is zero. ER crossed with E theta is EZ, right? And then this L gets distributed to, to both these terms, right? So we have ML squared theta dot plus ML X dot cosine theta, EZ, Green EZ and red EZ are the same thing. So I'm just going to substitute in this red EZ. And uh, this is uh, HA. So our angular momentum with respect to A. Using our first definition. Using this definition. We're going to take the derivative of this. So we're taking the derivative of the first definition we used for angular momentum. And when we take the derivative of this. Um, we end up with ML squared theta double dot. M and L are constants. And then we uh, M and L are constants again here. And we have to do the product rule with X dot and cosine theta. So derivative of the first is X double dot times the second cosine theta. And then um, 
uh, plus the first, which is x dot, and then derivative of the second. So derivative of cosine theta is negative theta dot sine theta. So that's where that negative comes from, theta dot sine theta. And again, uh, ddt of ez, that's a zero because um, it's inertially fixed. So this is ddt of h of a. All right, keep that in mind. We're gonna like put that in our back pocket and come back to it later because now we have to do the other definition. We have another definition of dha dt, which is this right here, which we also did in the last video. So let's start by uh, drawing the free body diagram. And we're doing this because we need to take the moment with respect to A. There's only two forces that act on our particle P. There's gravity, which acts in the EX direction, MG EX. And then there is the reaction force, which I say acts in the negative ER direction. Uh, you could put negative or positive here. It doesn't matter. Uh, the signs will work themselves out. But I just put a negative here. So add our forces together. Minus RER plus MGEX. Uh, I'm going to replace EX uh, with the green basis here. So EX is equal to cosine theta ER minus sine theta E theta uh, plus zero EZ, which is exactly what we have here, cosine theta E theta. I mean, I'm sorry, cosine theta ER minus sine theta E theta. And I'm going to collect all the terms. So we have an ER term here and one here. So this is our ER term. And then this is our E theta term. And that's from uh, distributing that MG. Now this is where, you know, what I said, we're gonna we're gonna kill that um, unknown force R uh, in in uh, this step right here, where we're calculating the moment with respect to A. The moment with respect to A is equal to R crossed with F, where R points from the point you want to take the uh, uh, moment about out to you know where the force is. And uh, just to be clear, this is the vector we use for r, which I think is also conveniently called r. Great, wow. Um, all right, so r is equal to uh, ler crossed with the force, and uh, er crossed with er is zero. Zero, goodbye, unknown r. er crossed with e theta is ez, ez. So this is m a, the moment with respect to a. The other term we need in this definition here, we also need r dot, but we know what r is. r was ler. We're just going to take the derivative of this. We can take the constant l out, take the constant l out, d dt of er. We already did that. That is theta dot e theta. So r dot is l theta dot e theta. Okay. And finally, we plug in. Uh, we already did rp dot uh, previously, so I just plug that in right here, and our dot is here, which we just found, and then the moment is right there. And then uh, it's just do the cross product. So E theta crossed with E R is negative E Z, and then E theta crossed with E theta is zero, and then we just can bring this, this last term down. Um, both of these are in the EZ direction, which means we can just replace it with this red EZ because they all point in the same direction. So this is our second definition um, of DHADT, right? This is our second result of DHADT. Our first one was, was this one right here. So now we just equate them. We just equate them. That's what we did right here. We equate the derivatives. Uh, we can set the EZ component equal to each other. Uh, the equivalent uh, of, of that is taking the dot, dotting each side with uh, capital EZ. And uh, so we'll get this is equal to this. This term cancels this term. Uh, I'm gonna bring this one over to the other side. So now it's here and it's positive. And then we can cancel M and then we can cancel one of the L's and we'll end up with our differential equation of motion. That's it, we did it. That's the absolute definition.
This is gonna go a little quicker now because we already found most of the stuff, but this is a relative definition. This is our other definition from last video. Go take a look. This is our other definition for the angular momentum with respect to point A. So R crossed with M R dot. We already know what R is. That is L E R. R dot. We also already know that. M L theta dot E theta. E R crossed with E theta is E Z. So we end up with this for our angular momentum with respect to A. Let's take the derivative of this. Derivative of this will get us this right here, right? Because all we got to do is take the derivative of, of theta dot, which is theta double dot. Great. This is our first definition now for the relative definition of dHA dt. Now, we have our other equation right here, d dt ha, uh, for the relative definition. And that's equal to the moment with respect to a minus r cross with m r a double dot. What is r a? r a was just x e y. That was this right here, x e y. So r a dot is just x dot e y and r a double dot is x double dot e y, right? So now we just plug in, <laughs> which I've said quite a few times already. We just plug in. We already know ma. We did that uh, in the for the absolute definition. That's this minus ler. That is r crossed with m r a double dot, which we just said was x double dot e y x double dot e y. And then we take e y, and I'm going to get it in the green basis. So this is. Uh, E y and representing the green basis. And then we do the cross product. So E r cross with E r is zero. E r cross with E theta is E z. Now we have uh, all of our components in the E z. So we just bring that to the outside. And this is our new expression for uh, D d t h a. So now we can take this, we take this, and equate it to this. Just set those two equal to each other. And we'll get this. Dot both sides by EZ will give us this. We can cancel out an L, an M, L, M, one of the L's, M, and we end up with this. And it's the same result as the absolute definition. We did it, we're done! We did it! Right? This is the exact same thing using the, ap the relative definition as we got with the absolute definition. So use whatever one you want. I don't care. If you like the absolute one, use that one. If you like the relative one, fine. Use that one. I tend to use the absolute one. I think it's a little bit easier, but whatever. To each their own. If you get the right answer in the end, it doesn't really matter how you did it, as long as you understand it. Um, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.